Well, I have just received the mirror and corrector back from the coder. We're going to start with the mirror and reinstall it in the scope. And it looks nice. It doesn't have that ghost that it used to have. And uh, so that'll do real well. I'm going to give it a little dust off. And I'm wearing gloves simply because that keeps the inevitable skin oils from getting onto the, onto the mirror. So this is the thimble. We have the optical side forward and the thimble inserts with the, with the little uh, white Teflon gasket. It inserts in the hole very carefully. We don't want to chip anything. And right now I'm not going to worry about orientation. And so that just seats nicely. And then on the back side, we have Teflon. We've got the star spring washer with the ring side forward and the stars pointing rearward. And then we have this um, retention plate and that simply screws on. And I can't tell you how tight to do that, but I can tell you that it stops while there is still some, some uh, spring angle in there. So we haven't compressed that down to nothing. Apparently the, the designers have gotten this one just right. So I can get it a little snugger, but that's good and snug. I'm going to seal that with a little bit of um, just a drop of nail polish on there because I know that's easy to remove and then we'll proceed. This is when we, this is the orientation of the mirror. So to orient the mirror, all you're doing is you're orienting the mirror to this notch. And we made a, a point of reference earlier. We noticed that there was one line, two lines, and three lines in the fingerprint on the back here. And I'm going to loosen this up a little bit so that I can move things. And I'm going to rotate to right where it was supposed to be. That's our alignment. And then I'm going to turn the thimble while holding the retention plate until we get to our bottomed out position. So it's easy to forget these steps and you can see that there's some freedom there even when, the, when this is snug. Um, I'm going to get that a little snugger. And I'm watching the, the washer. It still shows plenty of spring compliance there. I'm going to rotate this. But you can see that if, if that Got a lot of abuse, the mirror can rotate out of position and it can rotate back into position if you've misaligned it or if you've got something open and you want to test different orientations. And so we don't really know or care which way was up in the mirror. All we care was which way was aligned with the slot because that slot is going to align with the focus rod and the focus rod has its distinct position in the orientation of the scope. Now I'll pause for a, a little bit of nail polish to seal the threads. So I have the spindle and back plate assembly with the um, focus rod ready in place but loose in here. And I just touched the greasy threads with my fingers so now I'm going to be that much more careful. I will put the, the mirror return spring in place and then we can place the thimble over the spindle. Very nice tight fit. No lubrication. Dry as a bone. Then I can, with the uh, white plastic disc at the forward end of the focusing rod ahead of the, um, the, the mirror retention plate, I'm going to wobble this to get that in place. You can see the, uh, the disc is forward of the plate and the rod extends rearward. And now we can rotate the 
the rod into the threaded hole here. And now this is secured back in position. I'm going to be blowing dust off the mirror one more time before this all goes back together. And, and I'm also going to bring the mirror all the way to the rear so it doesn't have a lot of tube to scrape over it before the tube reaches home at the edge. This is your opportunity to lubricate if there's anything missing at the forward, if you need more lubrication at the forward end of the focus rod, but you can always get at things from the rear here. I'm eyeballing in there to make sure that my spring is laying out nicely. I think it's sort of offset to one side, so I'm going to give that a nudge to center it. And uh, But these coils are stacking up nicely. Next, we're going to do the corrector and install it back in the barrel. Tissue paper and then lens paper from the coater. And I can look for my familiar markings. Now, this does not have a, a baffle spot on it anymore. That was removed in the process. and. Um, I'm looking for my prominent mark. There it is. That's the nice mark that I saw at approximately 3 o'clock. And I'm going to verify on my old um, videos just what I saw. But uh, we're in good shape with that. I don't see any reason to even, well, I'll blow, blow at it a little bit, but there, it looks invisibly clean. I'm, of course, going to have it concave downward. That mark is a little going to be a little down from three o'clock. And this is the point where I just want to be delicate and I'm kind of feeling the, the barrel go around it. And pressing it up to seat it. Feels a little cockeyed. There, now it goes a little deeper than you thought at first, and now it's in place. And I will double check my, I will double check my information on orientation, but I think we've got it where we want it. Now I'm going to install the retainer ring. Um, the notches are going to be up for us, and here the trick is just going to be fussing with this long enough to keep it from being cross-threaded. I still have my gloves on because I'll end up touching the corrector on occasion. And there, oh, well that just gently fell right in and happily so. It's possible to move the corrector when we're doing this, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that, that mark that's visible at the front edge. And my understanding is you do not want to have any pressure on the corrector. You just want to retain it so it doesn't rattle. So it's just basically touching at most. I imagine there's a little bit of a difference between this older type of retaining ring, which is um, which is a synthetic fibrous sort of material, and the current types or replacement if you need them, which are aluminum. Somehow aluminum seems a little uh, rougher on the, on the optics, so you want to be more careful about not snugging that down. I'm noticing that my, my marking is disappearing as I'm covering it up here, so I'm going to give myself a little, a little key there to make sure nothing moves in the meantime. And I'll just finish tightening down the retaining ring. That's the point where, with gentle pressure, it stops, so I'm just, I'm just going to back that off just the slightest amount, if I can. And then that's in place. I'll put a little drop of sealant on there to keep that from rotating out of position. Now we do a final blowing of the dust on the mirror, verifying that the inside of the, of the barrel is clean, and we can just Put it all together here, hopefully to stay together for decades to come. There, we found 
found the start of the thread. And then we're going to be making sure we get it tightened down enough because, and right now it's rotating with respect to the ring. We want to make sure that this bottom seam aligns perpendicular with, with these um, components and that'll get all tightened up and we can finalize that later once we've got the control box on to get a better handle for it. So we're in place and our, our uh, assembly is sealed up. I've left my mark on the corrector for peeling off much later and uh, we can put that aside and um, that's the end of this project until we test it out. I can add also that the one thing that is still to be done is to apply a baffle. This is the um, the modern factory baffle that is uh, a turned aluminum disc and uh, black anodized backside is slightly convex and you can kind of detect that here. That convexity of course matches the curvature of the corrector and we put a small little drop um, and spread around for a little film of um, silicone tub caulk adhesive in the center and that lets us position the, uh, the baffle and get it centered usually by eye is good enough uh, especially if you've got everything together there's enough little reflections and symmetries inside that you can eyeball it and it's fairly forgiving of letting you shift it for quite some time and it sticks where you leave it so um, that's a little bit just of a I don't know if you call it an art instead of a science. And so that will be the conclusion of the, of the restoration of the optical tube assembly and the coating of the mirrors, the mirror and the corrector.